Which US president was the most LGBTQ friendly and which one was the worst? ProfessorPride.com offers hundreds of ways to show off your pride and learn more about the LGBTQ community. Check it out now and support our work using the first link below. This week we took a look at every US president and everything they ever said or did concerning the LGBTQ community to find out which one was the most and least LGBTQ supportive. We also looked at each of their personal relationships and found 14 of them are believed to have been LGBTQ themselves, including gay, bisexual, and asexual. So here are all the presidents in order. George Washington served from 1789 to 1797. As the first president and first gay president of the United States, Washington wrote many love letters to his same-sex lover. He also let same-sex couples in the Revolutionary Army and hired many LGBTQ people to serve, including Baron Friedrich von Steuben, a gay man who led his infantry, and Casimir Pulaski, an intersex person who led his cavalry to win the American Revolution. We did episodes covering George, Friedrich, and Casimir all linked below. Nothing is known on the LGBT record of America's second president, John Adams, who served from 1797 to 1801. The third US president, Thomas Jefferson, served from 1801 to 1809. But before taking office, he revised Virginia's law to make the punishment for sodomy castration instead of the previous punishment execution. Jefferson was also widely rumored to be one of the few same-sex partners of George Washington. Our fourth president, James Madison, who served from 1809 to 1817, was widely rumored to be asexual, making him the first asexual president. Again, nothing is known on the LGBT record of our fifth president, James Monroe, who served from 1817 to 1825. Presidents John Quincy Adams, who served from 1825 to 1829, Andrew Jackson, who served from 1829 to 1837, and Martin Von Buren, who served from 1837 to 1841, were all rumored to have same-sex relationships while in office, but little is known as to whom those gay relationships were with. Our ninth president, William Henry Harrison, who served from 1841 to 1841, is rumored to have experimented in a homosexual relationship, and this was believed to have been the reason he helped a gay couple, Petcherhand and an ex-slave mourning guard, escape when their same-sex relationship was found out. We could not find any LGBT record for the next four presidents. John Tyler, who served from 1841 to 1845, James K. Polk, who served from 1845 to 1849, Zachary Taylor, who served from 1849 to 1850, and Millard Fillmore, who served from 1850 to 1853. Our 14th president, Franklin Pierce, who served from 1853 to 1857, was widely rumored to be bisexual, making him the first bisexual president in U.S. history. After him, President James Buchanan, who served from 1857 to 1861, has the most extensive evidence of a gay relationship while in office and many believe it's because of this ample evidence that he was the first gay president to not care if others knew of his same-sex relationships. One of the most famous presidents in our history, Abraham Lincoln, who served from 1861 until his assassination in 1865, was rumored to have a same-sex relationship with Joshua Speed and was therefore rumored to be bisexual. We could not find any LGBT record on the 17th president, Andrew Jackson, who served from 1865 to 1869. Our 18th president, Ulysses S. Grant, who served from 1869 to 1877, signed into law the Civil Rights Act of 1871, putting in motion the start of the LGBTQ rights movement in the United States. It is also widely rumored that Grant was gay as well and had same-sex relationships while in office. Our next president, Rutherford B. Hayes, who served from 1877 to 1881, said while in office that homosexuality was, quote, one among many tragic signs that we are a broken people. It is for this reason we cannot consider Hayes an ally of our community. The 20th president of the United States, James A. Garfield, served from 1881 to 1881, but wrote passionate notes to his college friend, Harry Rhodes, pointing to a long-term same-sex relationship with him. Our next president, Chester A. Arthur, who served from 1881 to 1885, 
was rumored to be homosexual as well. However, the evidence of this is sketchy at best. Unlike other presidents before who have recorded relationships with same-sex partners, Arthur was only rumored to be gay because he had over 40 pairs of trousers and he redesigned the White House many times while in office, for which he was the lead designer. So it is merely based on this stereotypical evidence that people believe he might have been homosexual, but no actual evidence or relationships point to this being true. President Grover Cleveland served from 1885 to 1889, and while he was presumed straight, his wife Rose was a lesbian and had same-sex relationships while her husband was in office. Grover fully accepted her as a lesbian, though, and during his time in office, Cleveland also welcomed Weewa and Matilda Cox, both of which were Two-Spirit individuals to the White House for a meeting. Two-Spirit is the term Native Americans use for what we now call transgender, so this was the first time a president welcomed a trans individual to the White House. Nothing is notable on the LGBT record of our 23rd president, Benjamin Harrison, who served from 1889 to 1893. Our 24th president was also Grover Cleveland, as he was re-elected in 1893 and served again until 1897. Nothing is notable for the LGBT record for Presidents William McKinley, who served from 1897 to 1901, Theodore Roosevelt, who served from 1901 to 1909, William Howard Taft, who served from 1909 to 1913, Woodrow Wilson, who served from 1913 to 1921, and Warren G. Harding, who served from 1921 to 1923. Our 30th president, Calvin Coolidge, who served from 1923 to 1929, was noted only on this list because it was his administration which used the word gay for the first time in U.S. history. However, the word gay only appeared in his wife, Grace Coolidge's biography, as a term to mean happiness, not referencing homosexuality. Calvin did not do anything notable for or against the LGBTQ community during his time in office. Next was President Herbert Hoover, who served from 1929 to 1933. He was widely rumored to have same-sex relationships during his time in office. One of the most significant and incredible presidents in U.S. history is Franklin D. Roosevelt, who served from 1933 to 1945. He lived in Hyde Park, New York with his wife, Eleanor, who just happened to be a lesbian but Franklin is rumored to have had affairs with other women and seemed to have an arrangement with Eleanor that they can each have separate relationships with other women. FDR even built her a house across from his on their Hyde Park property so she can live there with her lover, Lorena Hickok. After FDR passed away in 1945, Eleanor moved into his mansion with Lorena, where they would live out the rest of their days happily. The only note on FDR's record against the gay community is his certifying of FBI director J. Edgar Hoover, who we talked about on the show before, because he was a gay man who tried to cover for being gay by writing a letter to the editor of a paper associating homosexuality with pedophilia for the first time. FDR gave Hoover more power to investigate communists during his presidency, but Hoover took this power and investigated people for being homosexual too. So while this was under FDR's term, it should not be counted against him, in my opinion. After FDR passed away in office, our next president, Harry S. Truman, served from 1945 to 1953. While in office, Truman signed an executive order adding, quote, sexual perversion to a list of behaviors that would keep a person from holding a position in government as part of the Lavender Scare. This included LGBTQ people. He also implemented a don't ask, don't tell style policy for the military. It should also be noted that Truman was reportedly bullied in his elementary school years and called a sissy. He later reflected on this and said it was, quote, hard on a boy. It makes him lonely and gives him an inferiority complex. He has a hard time overcoming it. He often referred to his feminine features and attributes as things he did not like about himself. Our 34th president, Dwight D. Eisenhower, served from 1953 to 1961, but during the Cold War, one of his first acts as president was to sign an executive order banning LGBTQ Americans from serving in the federal government. President John F. Kennedy, who served from 1961 to his assassination in 1963, spoke many times about his strong belief that gay couples should have the legal right to be married, but believed churches should not be forced to perform those same-sex marriages, which I believe is completely fair. As long as the government recognizes the marriage, 
the church should be separate from the state, and churches should have the right to refuse if they so choose. Our next president, Lyndon B. Johnson, served from 1963 to 1969. He believed that gay individuals should have equal rights and protections under the law. He even signed into law the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which would later lead to LGBTQ freedoms being passed. The 37th president, Richard Nixon, who served from 1969 to 1974, has a troubled history on LGBTQ rights. On the one hand, during the Watergate scandal of 1972, the arguments his team made for private citizens to have the freedom to make personal decisions later led to the same arguments being used to gain rights and protections today for transgender individuals. However, during the same time in office, Nixon also said, quote, gays have a problem. They're born that way. He also said, quote, Boy Scout leaders, YMCA leaders, and others bring them in that direction, and teachers. And if you look over the history of societies, you will find, of course, that some of the highly intelligent people, Oscar Wilde, Aristotle, etc., 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 were all homosexuals. Once a society moves in that direction, the vitality goes out of that society. Vitality meaning superiority or strength. So he was notoriously anti-gay, but arguments in his Watergate court case were later used to gain transgender rights. Our 38th president, Gerald Ford, who served from 1974 to 1977, did not support same-sex marriage during his time in office, and spoke a few times about his dismissal of gay marriage but he supported the end of sodomy laws in the Lawrence v. Texas court case, which ultimately led to the U.S. Supreme Court abolishing sodomy laws and made being homosexual legal in the United States in 2003. Ford's son was also rumored to be gay, and Gerald supported his son's sexual orientation. Most notably from his term in September 1975, there was an assassination attempt on President Ford. A woman named Sarah Jane Moore fired two shots at him from close range. The first shot missed Ford, and a man named Oliver Bill Sipple, a Vietnam War veteran who happened to be standing next to the woman, pushed her arm away as she fired a second shot. This allowed Ford to get away from her and the police to arrest her. The San Francisco Chronicle then outed Sipple as gay to the world in their coverage, after which it generated more positive press for the gay community than any other time in recent history, but it also stirred up backlash to Oliver. After this, Ford sent a letter of appreciation to Sipple and released a letter to the press publicly thanking the gay man for saving his life. Our next president, Jimmy Carter, served from 1977 to 1981. During his presidential campaign, he campaigned alongside LGBTQ hero Harvey Milk. President Carter also said while in office, quote, I believe Jesus would approve of gay marriage and Carter played a key role at the time in bringing gay rights to the forefront of national politics. Our 40th president, Ronald Reagan, who served from 1981 to 1989, had a terrible record on LGBTQ rights. To his credit, one year before announcing his candidacy for president, he came out against Proposition 6 in California, which would have banned gay people from teaching in public schools. But once in office, Reagan called homosexuality a, quote, tragic illness that needs to remain illegal. When he found out two of his campaign aides were gay, he immediately asked for their resignations. Reagan also considered HIV and AIDS to be a gay disease and said, quote, maybe the Lord brought down this plague because illicit sex is against the Ten Commandments. He also did not instruct the CDC or allow any other government funding to go towards HIV and AIDS research until he learned a straight person got the disease too. By the time he first addressed the disease, nearly 23,000 LGBTQ people died from it. Our next president was George H.W. Bush, who served from 1989 to 1993. During his campaign for president, he made anti-gay positions a cornerstone of his policies. When he got into office, he signed into law the Hate Crime Statistics Act of 1990, requiring the Attorney General to collect data on crimes that showed prejudice based on race, religion, sexual orientation, or ethnicity. He oversaw the removal of a ban on, quote, sexual deviation from the 1965 Immigration and Nationality Act. He also supported the federal marriage amendment that would have barred same-sex marriage on a federal level. He did little to support HIV and AIDS research, while many LGBTQ people died from the disease, 
and he appointed two anti-LGBTQ judges to the Supreme Court, David Souter and Clarence Thomas. With this said, years after he left office in 2013, he served as a witness to the wedding of two women in Maine, but during his time in office, he was still very much mixed on his support for LGBTQ people. The 42nd President of the United States, Bill Clinton, served from 1993 to 2001. During his campaign for president in 1991, he met with LGBTQ advocates in Hollywood, making him the first major presidential candidate to seek the LGBTQ vote. In 1997, during an interview with a human rights campaign, he said he supported a law that protects homosexuals in the workplace. However, Clinton also signed into law Don't Ask, Don't Tell, which banned LGBTQ people from serving openly in the military. In June 1996, he said, quote, I remain opposed to same-sex marriage. I believe marriage is an institution for the union of a man and a woman. This has been my long-standing position, and it is not being reviewed or considered. Also in 1996, he signed into law the Defense of Marriage Act, stating that the federal government will only recognize marriage between one man and one woman. After leaving office and once his wife Hillary started her first campaign for president in 2008, he said the Defense of Marriage Act that he signed was not anti-gay, even though it clearly was. He also quickly changed his position on gay rights and said he is, quote, basically in support of gay marriage. As his wife Hillary was gearing up for another attempt to be president in 2013, Bill Clinton wrote to the Washington Post saying, quote, I now know that even worse than providing an excuse for discrimination, the law itself is discriminatory. It should be overturned, referring to the Defense of Marriage Act. Our 43rd president, George W. Bush, served from 2001 to 2009. During his time in office, he supported a constitutional ban on same-sex marriage and said during his campaign to be re-elected, quote, we believe marriage is the union between a man and a woman and should be defended. I will continue to appoint judges who strictly interpret the law and not legislate from the bench. However, his two nominations to the Supreme Court, Justices Robert and Alito, have both been doing way more legislating than interpreting the law, and both have been extremely anti-LGBTQ in their decisions. With this said, years after leaving office in 2013, he attended the wedding of two lesbians, Bonnie and Helen. He also offered to perform the ceremony for the lesbian couple, but reportedly had a scheduling conflict. Our next president was Barack Obama, who served from 2009 to 2017. Years before taking office in 2004, he said that he supported civil unions and civil rights for gays and lesbians, but insisted, quote, marriage is between a man and a woman. By 2009, he openly supported same-sex marriage, domestic partnerships, and the adding of sexual orientation to the Human Rights Act according to multiple surveys before becoming president. While running for president, he pledged to repeal the Defense of Marriage Act and Don't Ask, Don't Tell, both signed into law by President Clinton. Once he became president, Obama signed into law the Matthew Shepard and James Byrd Jr. Hate Crimes Act, which gave the Justice Department jurisdiction over crimes of violence targeting victims because of their sexual orientation or gender identity. In December 2010, he repealed Don't Ask, Don't Tell, allowing LGBTQ Americans to serve openly in the military once again. In February 2011, he instructed the Justice Department to stop defending the Defense of Marriage Act in court. In July 2014, he signed an executive order protecting LGBTQ employees working for federal contractors. By January 2015, he became the first U.S. president to use the word transgender in a State of the Union address. In April 2015, he said conversion therapy for minors should be banned nationally. During his time in office and thanks to his appointment, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of marriage equality in June of 2015. And in June of 2016, he designated the Stonewall National Monument as the first U.S. national park dedicated to LGBTQ history. Our 45th president and convicted felon Donald Trump served from 2017 to 2021 and was the first Republican candidate for president to mention LGBTQ rights in his convention speech. Before taking office and once in office, Trump repeatedly said he is against gay marriage and against transgender individuals having equal rights. In September 2019, while serving as president, 
He addressed the United Nations where he spoke of his work ending the criminalization of homosexuality in other countries. To this date, he has not done a single thing to stop the criminalization of homosexuality in any of those countries. During his time in office, he also signed over 350 anti-LGBTQ executive orders and policies. This included defunding research for HIV and AIDS, only reinstating some of that funding once he learned that more straight and cisgender people have HIV nowadays than LGBTQ people. And he hired many anti-LGBTQ people who support conversion therapy to his campaign's administration and nominated some of them to the Supreme Court. During his 2024 presidential campaign, he has endorsed Project 2025, and his team members are the ones that not only wrote the 920-page manifesto, but star in most of the tutorial videos calling for the end of gay marriage, social security, banning women's health care, banning transgender people from being trans at any age, even adults, and banning LGBTQ people from adopting a child. Our 46th and most recent president at the time of this recording is Joe Biden, who served from 2021 to 2025. Long before he was president, Joe Biden served as a U.S. Senator, and while there in 1972, he said, quote, My gut reaction is that they, meaning homosexuals, are security risk. He also said as a senator that he believes marriage is between one man and one woman. Since his time running for vice president under President Obama in 2008, it seems Biden has changed his views on gay rights. After he became president himself in 2021, Biden hosted multiple Pride Days at the White House. And in June 2021, he announced the National Pulse Memorial, making the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, Florida, the scene of the most horrific attack on LGBTQ people in U.S. history, a national monument. In August 2021, he led the Departments of Education, Justice, and Housing to advise schools on how to better protect LGBTQ people. In December 2022, Biden signed the Respect for Marriage Act into law, protecting same-sex marriage in law rather than a Supreme Court ruling that can be overturned. By April 2023, he filed a lawsuit challenging Tennessee's ban on gender-affirming health care. We examined each president's full record to find anything that referenced the LGBTQ community and found the good and the bad on all of their records. After our research, depending on how you weight each action in a pros and cons list, we believe the most LGBTQ-friendly president in U.S. history to either be Barack Obama or Joe Biden, but a Kamala Harris presidency could supersede this and become far better considering her and her vice presidential pick, Tim Walls, both have an amazing record on LGBTQ rights. We also believe the worst president on their LGBTQ record would either be Ronald Reagan because of his response to the AIDS crisis or his calling of homosexuality a tragic illness, or Donald Trump because of his ruthless attacks in over 350 executive orders and policies against our community. No matter where you stand, this is their full record of where every president stood during their time in office on LGBTQ rights. We provided the facts, and now it's up to you to determine for yourself who you think is most and least friendly to our community. Let us know your opinions in the comments down below. Be sure to check out ProfessorPride.com for hundreds of ways to show off your pride, including our new Storms Don't Last Forever or our Gay Penguins pins. Check them out now along with LGBTQ books at ProfessorPride.com. Special thanks to our members and subscribers this month for helping support our work providing LGBTQ education and resources. Please subscribe to our channel or click on this video to continue enjoying Powered by Rainbows.